Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live, and you are free to call in and talk live on the airwaves. That was, that's what we do here on Free Talk Live. That, I mean, that's let's, it. Let's be serious. We we didn't we wouldn't have called it that if it wasn't if that wasn't the case. That's a good so, point. Yeah, you're welcome to call in. It's Mark with you and Chris. It's live here uh, this Saturday night, so from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. If or what, what is that? 1900 to uh, 2200. There, very good, Mark. Sarge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you you made it to a specialist. Is that right? Uh, Spe- well, yeah. Certain people go down a path for NCOs, and certain people just do their job. I see. I was one of those that just did their job. Just did their job. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can call in, talk about what you want. If it's uh, between 7 and 10 Eastern Time, we're on the lines taking your calls seven days a week. Today, I've got one. That, Chris, this story, you know, the names change, the locations change, the nouns switch around. Right. But basically, this story comes up. It does. At least once a year. Sadly, it does. And to me, it's important to talk about when it comes up because it kind of lays out freedom in a way that you just don't see otherwise. Mm-hmm. And the headline here coming from, uh, looks like uh, abcnews.com, written by Heather Lee. Judge rules boy fighting leukemia will get chemotherapy d- despite the parents' disapproval. Now, I could just go through and read the litany of facts here, right? But... You're going to find some religious or philosophical uh, belief, right? And they're going to say that, you know, they had this problem or that problem. In this case, the parents actually, uh, their daughter had had cancer also. Right. And apparently been treated, and uh, they say it nearly killed her. Cancer also will nearly kill you. Kill you. So, um, you know, chemotherapy and cancer. Chemotherapy, I hope everybody understands, chemotherapy is a dangerous and difficult procedure to undergo putting poison in you with the hope that it'll kill the right cells and not kill your good cells it's going to kill some good cells there's no doubt right sure now i'm pretty relatively big believer in modern medicine i'm going to go ahead and say yeah you know if my son had cancer leukemia I'm going to go for the chemotherapy because I want him to survive and I want him to him to have the best chance. And I figure a young person is more likely than, uh, you know, somebody 48 like me and obviously right. much older to survive. But I believe you've got the right. I guess a better statement is what right do strangers have to come into your family's life and determine what kind of medical treatment people in your family are going to seek? Yes, and and to me, decisions about a child are those are the most intimate decisions. You know what I mean? These right. these are the things that you're not going to agree with every parenting choice I made, and I'm not going to agree with everything you do. But I have to respect that those are your choices. It's your family. It's not my family. And. The freedom to make a decision ultimately means it's not your freedom. Remember, the freedom to make a decision means you have the freedom to, pardon me, pardon me, uh, the freedom to make a bad decision. Uh, Exactly. Because if you don't have the freedom to make a bad decision, you don't have the freedom to make a decision. (laughs) And remember, the the bad decisions at, at one time, things that we would consider bad decisions today were considered the norm. They were the good decisions of their time. Sure. Let's just take uh, take this little boy and get his blood leached. I mean, that would be the response. That, that's perfect. Yes, let's leach the boy uh, until he's anemic. Maybe that will cure the humors that are in him. Uh, right. Uh, or, you know, I mean, you're, you're pointing out, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what do they call that? Uh, argumentum ad uh, absurdum, absurdum, right? Sure. Uh, you're making an absurd argument. But it's true. <laughs> Right? Yeah. All medical procedures have risk. Yes. And chemotherapy probably has more risk than most medical procedures. This isn't getting a, a shot of penicillin, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Um, so this young man could not survive 
based on the chemotherapy. Now, of course, it's going to be attributed to the cancer for his death. It's you know you know the statistics aren't going to say that he died from the chemotherapy. They're going to say he died from the cancer, and that's going to be unfortunate. And certainly, the guy the kid has cancer, and we don't know if not getting chemotherapy, you know, the cancer could just go into remission. Maybe there's a miracle. I don't know. Maybe right. Jesus or Vishnu or Odin steps in, right? And uh, and the kid goes into remission. I like. I'm not the one to determine why these things happen, but we'd certainly say that you know cancer sometimes goes into remission. Do I think this is a good choice? Is this a choice that I would make for my family? No, but I'm not going to diminish this family's choice. I'm not going to say that this family is somehow bad wrong or stupid because they would make a different choice than i would and this is how we lose our freedoms right this is it it's it's people trying you know good well-meaning people who want the very best for you who step in and say well you're just not qualified to make this decision you're not making the right decision so we have to remove um certain speech from the internet we have to remove X. We have to remove Y. And, and this is where it starts. It and, gets really personal. Right. And in this case, it's removing a family's right to determine how their child is treated. I'm not and treated medically. I'm not saying that they're making the right decision. But all of America was shocked and upset last year when Great Britain determined that a young man could not go to, to Italy to seek treatment there because, you know, the NHS was uh, the right, uh, they'd done everything they wanted to do. And then they determined that, no, you can't go someplace else and seek medical treatment because that might make us look bad or whatever the the reason was that they, uh, they determined that was the case. So in that case, the government determined that a young person needed to die. Because, you know, uh, well, I don't know, reasons. I I don't even, that one I don't even understand. I'm shocked and appalled at that one. Government did not agree with the reason or or with the action that that parents wish to take with their child. Uh, Uh, I mean, in this case, I would hope that forcing the child into chemotherapy is, I would hope that chemotherapy is the right decision. That's what I believe. Yeah. But- I believe forcing a family to make a medical decision that I wouldn't make is a greater evil than, uh, you know, this family making what I would consider to be a bad decision. I could be wrong, and that's their decision. I think that human freedom is more important than human life, honestly. I I agree completely, and... And in this case, you know, where where they're talking about some of the treatments, there are there are a lot of people that do swear by these types of things. Which one, the chemotherapy or the, uh, uh, the alternative treatments? Alternative or? treatments, and yeah, and those include medical marijuana is listed here. Yeah, cannabidiol or CBD, which yeah. is is you can't throw a rock without hitting somebody right. selling CBD now. Um, fresh foods, alkaline water. You know, somehow water. sunflower seed oil isn't uh, considered to be some kind of cure-all, but marijuana seed oil, now that <laughs> stuff will cure all your problems, inflammation, whatever. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Canola oil, no, you deep, that's, that, that stuff's going to kill you. You deep fry your things in that, but CBD, whatever. <laughs> so I am a CBD fan. I, but, that's fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I've taken it. It didn't do anything for me. Maybe I didn't take it right. I don't care. Right. It doesn't particularly matter to me, um, you know, in the, the long run of it all. This is uh, this is a this is a situation that really hinges on a family's uh, decision to uh, right. Right. To make a decision. Right. And, you know, when you're talking about a young person, they don't have the ability to make a good decision. If I asked my 11 year old. To make a medical decision, it's going to be based on how good does it taste, how much is it going to hurt, you know, right, um, right, you know that that kind of thing. This is it's you know he's he's not going to want to do any of these things. Of course not. And this is a three year old. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. And so even less so. Absolutely. The number eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Now you know you want to tell me I'm wrong. Eight fifty five four fifty freebie. Please be prepared to explain to me why I'm wrong. Eight five five. Four five zero three seven three three. Here on Free Talk Live. Thanks. Free 
Free Talk Live. It's a live Saturday edition. It's Mark with you. And Chris. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450. Free is in freedom. And you are welcome to call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here this live Saturday evening. However, we are talking about... A story that I've got here from ABC. It's coming out of Hillsborough County, Florida. And I, I don't want you to draw any conclusions from that, uh, Chris. <laughs> now, I'm from Manatee County, Florida. And, um, you know, I'm right there next door to Hillsborough. And, you know, we in Florida, we have... <laughs> we. I know that it's always Florida man. Right. But in Florida, we believe that these stories come out of... Certain locations, little vortexes of weirdness. Yeah, I've, I've got that feeling from a few people from Florida. Now, Hillsborough County isn't one of those vortexes of weirdness that I would say, but it's sitting right next door to Polk County. And perhaps perhaps some of the weirdness is uh, rubbing off. I don't know exactly. Good. God bless all the folks down there in Polk <laughs> County, all my Lakeland listeners. Love you. Uh, the listeners, uh, the parents of a child at the uh, center of a story that's grabbed the na- nation's attention no longer have a say over whether he will receive chemotherapy. The decision came down late Wednesday afternoon, this week after a full day of testimony. The state had two doctors make their case as to why they think Noah needs chemotherapy right away. Noah's parents had the support and testimony of a family that believes chemotherapy is dangerous and nearly killed their daughter. The family will be able to treat Noah with other remedies, but he will have to undergo the chemotherapy. The judge said that after 28 days of chemotherapy, they will determine if the boy still has cancer and that the family can use treatments, including medical marijuana, to help ease his symptoms. It must be cleared by his doctors and they will have an opportunity to switch a doctor um, to a different doctor. He's already considered to be on day 15 of the treatment, I presume that's the chemotherapy treatment because he's had two rounds of chemo, so he's uh, essentially almost halfway done. The story has been has been in headlines since last Monday when the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office told media outlets his parents failed to bring Noah McAdams to a medically necessary hospital procedure and refused to follow up with life saving medical care. They did not provide specifics, but sent out an alert that labeled Noah as missing and endangered. They found the fam- family uh, Monday in Kentucky. State brought Noah back to John Hopkins All Children's Outpatient Facility to continue that care. And that still hasn't happened because the state needed a judge to approve a motion to move forward with the chemotherapy. The first motion was labeled last uh, was excuse me, tabled last Wednesday. But a judge today ruled in favor of a second motion that would allow doctors at John Hopkins All Children's to give Noah his Next round of chemo. His parents, uh, Taylor Bland Ball and Joshua McAdams, told ABC Action News he wasn't in any danger when they took him to Kentucky. We just want him to be healthy, happy, and with his family, and that's going to give him the absolute best care, Bland uh, Ball said. They made it seem like we were trying to run away. We were trying to seek no treatment whatsoever, and that's completely not the case. The family says that their son had leukemia, although they didn't give any uh, us any proof. They said that he's in remission and doing well. They said that they were taking him to Kentucky for a second opinion. We're not trying to run from the case, and there's nothing that we're trying to hide. We're just trying to seek the best uh, opinion, excuse me, option for our son. We basically just feel like it's our rights as parents. Um, our, our rights as parents are being stomped all over. But doctors who treat cancer like this say that because the leukemia isn't showing up, that doesn't mean he's cured. So, yeah, um, you know, you've got this situation here, and, and it, it happens pretty regularly. Yeah. And a good portion of America <clears throat> must believe that the best thing to do is to stop parents with whom they disagree. Yes. Now, I think I might disagree with these people's choices, right? If a doctor says chemotherapy needs to continue, then we're probably going to continue the the chemotherapy. Not because I just believe everything that uh, a doctor says. Right. But because, well... I think he's young, he's resilient, he's probably going to make it, uh, you know, let's let's go ahead and give it the best shot, and let's give, uh, you know, modern medicine its best option. I'm going to give the doctor's degrees some weight. Um, I don't know that much about medicine. Sure. 
Uh, and I, I don't always trust that amazing source, which is WebMD and every <laughs> other site on the Internet, yeah. to make medical decisions for me. I have to, in this case, I, I would have to put my trust in someone else who knows much more than I do. And, you know, I, I understand the desire to do things that are less invasive, and comparing, you know, rounds of chemotherapy to taking some CBD oil and eating good fresh foods, that all sounds really good. Yeah. Um, but as a parent, you know, that's that's what this comes down die to. Too. They do. Uh, <laughs> they do. And and it it should be one of those things that I hope they make the right decision, but I don't want to tell them they can't. Right. I can't. I, I'm I not can't. rooting against the parents here. I I'm just believe either. it's their right. And yes, I do believe it's a parent's right to make a decision for a three-year-old. I understand they can't make their own decision, but I don't think that the government or doctors, uh, doctors through the government, I don't, I don't think, because this ultimately comes down to either your parents have the right to uh, step in or you can take a gun. And you can make other people's kids uh, do what you want them to do. Yes. Those are your choices. Yes, and that's it. That's because it. that's what it is here. That's all it comes when, when down you, to. When you, you use government is a euphemism that we use for armed people willing to kill you if you don't do what they say. Right. And, and I'm not trying to be mean. I think that the people who work for the government realize that ultimately that's what they do. I don't think they're hiding from that. I don't think they're ashamed of it or anything like that. That's just it, ultimately. It and is. in this case, I think that the government should step back and say, hey, look, you know, um, we, we, we would go, go write you people a sternly worded letter that says that you really should take your kid back there and have him treated. But if you don't, it's your right as a parent and the consequences are yours. Yeah. And it's interesting how people's people's point of view on this is going to change. Nobody's going to tell me how to raise my kids. No government's going to tell me how to raise my kids until until a case like this comes up. And then it's like, well, right. they, they should throw these parents in jail. If they don't let the kid get chemo. Right. If you support uh, the, you know, the, to me, supporting the government stepping in and forcing this kid to get treatment is the same as supporting the British government refusing to give treatment to that kid last year. It's all the same thing because it's an implementation of government force. And when you say that it's OK for the government to step in and tell other people how they have to live their lives and how they have to receive medical treatment, then you're saying it's OK for the government to step in and tell you this is right. Ultimately, this is what everybody's begging for. All the burn burners out there, the Bernie Sanders folks and, <laughs> and you know, the, the Democrats and everybody who wants, you know, medical medical to be paid for. You want people who are ultimately not responsible. So right. what another term for that is irresponsible, right? <laughs> people who are irresponsible for their actions or irresponsible are you want them in charge of your medical decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, that's stupid. 855-450-3733. free as in Free Talk Live. You can use our Discord lines if you want to sound a little better. That's available to you. You go to discord.freetalklive.com. There's an app there. You can download it. You know, put it up on your phone and you'll sound great. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has found that though U.S. financial institutions are prohibited from doing business with foreign gambling websites, it's not illegal for U.S.-based Internet users to gamble on those sites. People have been using VPNs or virtual private networks to connect to sites like games.bitcoin.com and play games with Bitcoin Cash. Games.bitcoin.com features poker, blackjack, roulette, craps, keno, slots, and dice. You can conduct your own investigation at games.bitcoin.com. Free Talk Live. Call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Chris. Thank you for joining me this evening, Chris. My normal co-host, Ian, is uh, he's traipsing about the world. He's in Tokyo right now at the Bitcoin.com offices and uh, trying to liaison with them. My intention was to be there, too, but sadly, the uh, government of Japan decided I was not fit for entry and uh, kicked me out. But if you want to check out Bitcoin.com's website, they are a great source for everything that is uh, related to cryptocurrencies. If you need news on cryptocurrency, you go to news.bitcoin.com. 
If you need to get a wallet, that's an application that allows you to hold Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and several other cryptocurrencies. Uh, you can go to uh, the Bitcoin.com website and they've got a wallet there. They allow you to buy. They allow you to, uh, you know, they even give you some free stuff. They can show you where you can spend your Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. You just go to Bitcoin.com for the latest news and engage with the community. They've got a forum over there, Bitcoin. Dot com. Let's go to Drew, calling in from Virginia. Drew, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, so I just noticed that in the 90s, there was a lot of fear of litigation um, in the healthcare field. I don't have actual statistics or okay. anything, but just a lot of the chatter um, among the nurses and among some of the other healthcare staff. Um, there's a lot of fear of litigation. So if we take that 25 years into the future, um, it led to uh, a mindset of we got to do all that we ha- we can do. We got to we got to give every possible intervention, every right. possible medication, every possible treatment. So you know, this is a whole other generation that was raised in uh, the litigation soaked 90s. So, I mean. Okay. I, you know, I don't yeah. know if I'm a child of the 70s or child of the 80s. I'm not entirely sure. I was born in 1971. And youngster, I remember. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know you've got to be in the '60s. I see from all that gray hair. I see over there. Father time here. <laughs> but I remember stories like this from my childhood too. And okay. my mother's no libertarian, mind you. Uh, she's uh, she keeps a good eye on Fox News. I'll uh, <laughs> I will admit. Um, but she, you know, I guess probably inculcated me with the very first of these notions, and she just felt that it was a family's right. Um, I remember her talking about, and I wouldn't know if it was the Christian scientists or the Scientologists or anything like that, but it was just some sect or another that didn't believe in using doctors in the same way that, you know, the rest of us did or whatever. And she just, she's like, well, you know, they should be able to do it. So yep, I think yep. this was going on even before that. I will agree with okay. you that litigiousness okay. probably did raise rise in the 90s, and perhaps okay. more of this occurs, and like it exacerbates the problem. I'm not going to disagree with your premise entirely, but I just want to say that it did go on before that. Yeah, I'm right. trying to I'm not, I, go I'm ahead. Not saying it, I, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm, you know, I'm not making a judgment call. I think that a family has uh, the right to do – to make their own decisions. I mean, that's, you know, it's not up to the, a stranger, like he said. I'm just saying not the right or wrong of it. Yep, I'm just like, litigiousness is, is creating the, the it. Cause and, the cause and effect. And I say the 90s just because I'm in, my, I'm in my 40s, and so that's when I started observing it, and that's yep. when I got my license. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so also I've noticed, too, like the general mindset of the average RN, registered nurse, uh, is I'm making a sweeping generalization, yep. but um, that uh, the average... RN probably that I know of will say that yeah these pay, the average patient is on several you know there's at least one or two meds they don't need to be on. Are you general, an RN, Drew? Right. Yes, sir. I am, sir. Okay. Thank nice. You. Thank, thank you, you for so, your um, service. Oh, okay. Thank you for your service. Well, um, I just so, talk on the radio. Yeah. I'm not saving anybody's life over here, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Like, I appreciate <laughs> it. Hey, and. You know, those folks that are out there working hard. I mean, I, I think of RNs. My grandmother was one. Mm-hmm. I know the kind of work that they do, and I know that it's, uh, you know, thankless and difficult. They're running the LPNs and all that stuff, too. They're kind of that mid level. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody in the medical field, thanks for the work that you're doing. Let's go to Bob calling in from Indy. Bob, you're on Free Talk Live. Thanks, you guys. Hey, I just wanted to share a fun fact I heard, and it's not my opinion, it's a fact. Okay. The third lead, the third leading cause of death is medical mistakes. Number I've one, heard that. Heart and, feet, and number two is cancer. Number three is medical errors and medical mistakes. Yep, I've heard that, quick, that, uh, the, yeah, the drug, and, that legally prescribed drugs from a doctor yes. uh, kill far more people in America than drug overdoses also every year. Yes, it's a fun fact. Yeah, it's fun. nothing funny about it. It's a fun fact. <laughs> fun till you're dead. And, and when you go into a hospital, you're you're more likely to come out of there in worse shape than you are when you went in. Either you come out dead or with some other disease or problem. Uh, it's not some sterile environment. Well, <laughs> thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. I, I'm paranoid as hell when I go into a hospital room. Keep your hands washed, ladies I do. and gentlemen. I mean, no doubt. I mean, I've, I've got the bottle of Purell in my pocket. You know, it's like every five seconds I'm squeezing a bit into my hands and, and trying to sanitize myself. If, I, I, I get that. 
If I need medical attention, I'm certainly going to head off to the hospital. That's not my, uh, I'm not one of those sorts that is, you know, but I understand there's been plenty of friends of mine walk out of that place with MRSA. That stuff will kill you too. Let's go to Alan calling in from Bloomington, Delaware. Alan, you're on Free Talk Live. Thank you very much. I uh, certainly appreciate your last comment (laughs) and that uh, you really must be in charge of your own uh, not necessarily diagnosis, but when you receive your diagnosis, yeah. you must be in charge of your own prognosis of treatment modality. You're right. absolutely so, right, Alan. I mean, this is the most empowering. Th- I wish I, I, God darn it, I wish I'd have said this. I mean, the most empowering <laughs> thing that's been said on the air tonight is what Alan's saying here is, look, you know, all these experts that are giving you advice and opinions and, um, you know, expert opinions, Right. it's still up to you. And that's true in your education. That's true. That's true everywhere in the world because an authority figure is always ready to tell you what to do, but it's your life and the consequences to whatever they say then fall upon you. Right. Because they don't take responsibility for those things. They just don't do it. Now, let me share some facts with you if you'll give me the time. Number one, according to the Mayo Clinic, Initial diagnoses were only confirmed in 12% of cases Gosh. by a second opinion. To say it another way, seven, of, seven out of eight times the initial diagnosis was wrong. Yeah, that's pretty Fact miserable. Those two. are pretty miserable numbers. Well, just just think about that. Yeah. you know, because that's uh, that's pretty eye-opening in itself. So it would almost always recommend at least a second opinion before one proceeds any further. I'm just thinking own. about the medical procedures I've had in my life. Right. And none of them did I get a second opinion. None of them, right? Like I've got, you know, wow. some eye doctor wow. shooting a needle in my eye. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lesion there because you said there was, right? But maybe not. Well, like I say, it's, it, it always is in your best interest to obtain a second opinion, given the statistical uh, rate of the initial diagnosis only being right 12% of the time. Have you done this very one, often, Alan, one, yourself? One, one in eight times. Have you? D- no, I'm, I'm fairly aware of a lot of the literature now. Number, fact number two. Okay. Chemotherapy, the five-year mortality rate or survivability rate for chemotherapy is 2.1%. So is that referencing so, the chemo or the cancer? That is referencing people who take chemotherapy as their treatment option. Will two point one percent of them will be alive in five years? Wow. Okay, it's not. It's, it's best that's not such a bad late, number. You know, I'd, I'd recommend now. checking it on the internet, but uh, you know, it's certainly. Well, uh, let me let me recommend instead of checking it on the internet, yep. check your proof sources with places where there are editors and fact checkers, such as. Either publications like The Lancet, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the uh, the um, New England Journal of Medicine, Those or are the big even ones. Uh, wide, widespread publications like Scientific American, which will repeat those scientific studies from the published material, all of which must be peer-reviewed before they are published. And I'm okay. seeing similar numbers from NIH. National Institute of Health, mm. to what he's saying. Alan, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. All right. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE is in Free Talk Live. Would you... Yeah! Free Talk Live. Call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Chris. The number is 855-450-3733. We're talking about this family down in Florida. And I guess they didn't want to get their kid chemotherapy. And just talking about the, well, the different aspects of that. Uh, some guy called in recently. And, uh, Chris, you found some corroboration with this uh, this evidence about cytotoxic Toxic cytotoxic chemo- chemotherapy or poisonous to the cell. I assume that is. I'm I'm applying my own definition. Um, but but Sounds the right. five year survivability in adults at about two point one percent. 
Gosh, that's crazy. It seems like, I mean, I know people, I know at least one person that I can think of off the top of my head that survived chemotherapy. I mean, they're they're one out of 50? One out of 50. That's how I, I would dumb it down. And God, that seems so it crazy. basically says, you know, if you have chemo, now I kind of I kind of understand. Maybe there's more than one chemo. There, I'm sure there is, but it does kind of make me wonder why so many people are interested in pursuing alternatives to it. My dad went through a round of chemo and then refused the second round. He said he'd rather be dead than do that. I've heard people do that. He was also, you know, a smoker every... Oh, well, not every day of my life, but darn close to every day of my life. Right. And, you know, he wasn't going to live much longer than that anyway. And there was, you know, his quality, prognosis wasn't good. Quality of life. LibertyStickers.com. If you want to spread the ideas of liberty or just find some incredibly pithy and bombastic, witty, downright, uh, you know, just downright, uh, you know, the sort of statements that get people all upset. Bombastic. Can, bombastic. Yeah, I'd use that term, and I, I didn't want to use it again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, my fault. Uh, liberty-oriented messages, you can find them at libertystickers.com. It's libertystickers.com. Somebody out there screaming just the right word at the radio right now. <laughs> they are. Just trying to help. Almost Just, hear it. My helpful listeners. Let's go to Troy calling in from uh, Saskatchewan. Troy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey. What's um. Up? Yeah, I wish I could, uh, you know, disagree with you guys to make it more exciting radio. <laughs> you need you know, yell and scream on the other side of the issue, but I do, I, I do agree. You know, um, that the the family has the the right um, to decide. Um, uh, you know, uh, like the like you're absolutely right. Like the other the other side of the argument would be the state has the rights, and then in which case the state could do make you have whatever like crazy treatment that they wanted. You to take. Um, uh, so, so uh, I got I got a question. Um, how old is the kid in this uh, in this story? Three years old. Oh, okay. So the the direction I wanted to go with it, if if possible, I'll just sure. ask ask the question. Um, you know, uh, what what age does a majority occur? What age does a you know? Yeah, does, yeah. Does a, does it's a really great question. Adult make his own decision. Because if it's yeah. a 12-year-old kid who, for whatever reason, wants the chemotherapy and the parents don't want them to get the chemotherapy, you're probably going to find me siding with the kid at that point. Because right. I'm, you know, I, I think that at some point in your life, and I don't want to know when that is, and I really believe it's different for everybody. And I think it's different in different areas, too. But at some point in your, your life, you become responsible for your own medical treatment. I don't think my son at 11 years old is at that point. I just don't think he's farsighted enough. But I wouldn't say that all 11-year-olds are the same as my kid. Just fine. Right. That's that's how we tend yeah. to think of these things. And, and then again, as a parent, I'm probably the least qualified to determine when my son is going to be old enough to make that determination. But this is where the can of worms gets opened up to for me. I, I also believe that vaccines happen to provide some yeah. useful benefits. I do, too. Okay, so now are we? Oh, you know, and this so here, this here we go. This is, I, and I want to I want to just give a little bit of a personal experience. Sure, um, you know, raise, so okay, so there's yeah, the, you brought up vaccines, which with dovetails right into this conversation. Yeah, perfectly. And, um, also home, homeschooling. So I have two two like you know I've raised two kids with my wife, um, and. Uh, you know, now they are um, 19 and 17. One's almost turning 19. Um, okay. And, okay, so we, we homeschooled them um, until they were in grade 9. And we also kind of, we, they have all their vaccinations, but we did, we did delay them some. And, you know, I think there's, you know, this, my opinion as a parent, I thought there was more dangerous vaccines, and I avoided some of those. And... And got them the ones you know measles, mumps, rubella, like the, the really right. um right. ones that seemed to be seemed to be logical to do. But I did delay them a few years until you know they're strong. But one of the reasons um, I think so that they give like, kids all the vaccines but, that they do in the hospital is because they're like, I'm not sure we're going to see this kid again until they come back with some communicable oh, disease. So they just hit them oh, with all of them at once. Yeah, but when their babies are so so. So but here's the twist. Here's here's the twist. So they so they like, we homeschool them and we delay their vaccines to give them some of their vaccines. But then, but then about the age of 
uh, you know, 12. They're like, oh, well, why don't we have our... And they started asking questions and stuff. And it's like, okay. And, and they, um, as soon as they, you know, decided on it, like, I didn't resist. I'm like, oh, you want to get all your vaccines? Yep, go for it. You know, as soon as they, you know, they're out and about in society and, just, you know, there's, there's there's some peer pressure there to have the vaccines. And then, and then um, for... For schooling, they just decided they wanted to go to school. I'm like, yeah, go to go to school, sure. So they started high school, and they had a perfectly good time in high school. They right. Don't what what you were supposed but, to be doing when they were homeschooling they, was you were supposed to be empowering them around their education. And right. I applaud you for you know when they when they then took some power around their education for allowing them to take it. They're the ones responsible. As uh, the last uh, one of the last callers, Alan, uh, had previously said, you're responsible for your medical care. Ultimately, well, you're also ultimately responsible for your education, and it was both girls, Troy, is that right? Uh, girl and boy. Okay, yeah. gotcha. your, your kids are responsible for their education, and they took responsibility, and I applaud you and them. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty awesome, and I learned a lot from them. Um, but what, so, what, so, what's the, so that was maybe around 12, like I'm not sure, like that they were questioning and deciding that they wanted to go to high school and stuff, so yeah, where is that line um, where, where um, I guess it's maybe different with, which, with every person? Like, I, I oh, forget. What, no, um, I, I hate what, to interrupt what here. I, I'm the government, and the age is uh, 13 years and <laughs> seven months. Right. Or, That's exactly. Right. Uh, you'd say a rated R movie on your own at 17, but you can see it with a parent at, uh, you know, 12. And right. You can drive with a parent at 15. You can drive on your own at 16. Uh, you know, like just all this mishmash. You can. Uh, it's all arbitrary. Right. And you're, you know, when you're 17 years old, uh, some, if you have sex with an adult, it's uh, some kind of molestation. If you're 18, well, just go do a pornographic film. Right. I mean, wow. Yeah. Thanks for the call, Troy. Those are tough things to deal with, and it, I don't know. I don't know. And, and on the vaccines thing, I, I just I look at the number of vaccines kids take today, and I, I'm glad I don't have to make these decisions right now. It's not easy. I wouldn't claim it is, and I think every family needs to make their own decisions Agreed. as far as this goes. Let's go to Larry calling in from Indy. Larry, you're on Free Talk Live. Larry. Hello. There we go. Got him. Hey, look, uh, you know, I come on every week and tell us how uh, all the things that are being done to us are legally being done by law because you can have life, liberty, and property taken away by the due process of the law, and the laws are made up by the people that we elect and send to Washington, good or bad. I mean, the state has custody of our kids from the time they are born and they can make a law to tell you to do exactly what they want you to do with your child. So you really don't have any uh, say so in the matter. So I think you're absolutely you're right. Talking, they, they, well, they, you're they, talking about they, free freedom and so forth. Right. Uh, there's no such thing. And and if yeah. we did have it, we wouldn't uh, know how to protect it anyway. Well, but I don't anyway, know about that. I, I will say, I however, that it's very insightful, Larry. The truth is. I was doing a protest today, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I was downtown on the Monument Circle, and they're destroying that because they want to be cheap. Now, that's the symbol of the state of Indiana. And okay. I have to say that the police officers that were down there were really polite and really nice to me and everything. Of course, I've been knowing most of them for uh, years, but uh, they were really nice and placated me or whatever and let me protest and do whatever I wanted to do. Of course, I only had a sign, but I also had the sign on the other side that said, would you worship the devil to keep your iPhone? And I say everybody was in that line was looking, and and I think I put something on their mind the way that people cherish their iPhones and smartphones so much, and it's just something for people to think about. That's what I try to do when I do my protest, and uh, the kids love my costume and everything. So. What do you get a costume of? Uh, I'm I'm dressed up okay. I've got a, my paper hat, of course. You can see that on. Uh, on uh, if you Google Larry Vaughn Indianapolis, Larry Vaughn and Indianapolis, and it's a paper hat, and it's my slave shirt, and my. Uh, you got an outfit list. that calls yourself a slave. That's right. <laughs> this is a special alert for business owners, consultants, coaches, folks planning retirement, entrepreneurs, and anyone who is saving and investing to build a financial future. You are likely aware that financial privacy for most people has recently died a miserable death, and let's face it. 
Without privacy, there really is no security, is there? Bankrupt governments and banks on the verge of collapse are perhaps the biggest threat to your financial future today. The Lighthouse Law Club recognizes this and has been working diligently to provide safe, secure, and productive tools to ensure your privacy, your financial security, and your future financial well-being, despite the catastrophes which many people fear are looming ahead of us. Find out more with a variety of free videos on the YouTube channel for Lighthouse Law Club. Just search YouTube for Lighthouse Law Club and secure your future today. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition. Mark with you. And Chris. We've got announcements. I'm going to read them so that I don't mess it up because Ian is listening in Tokyo, half a world away. <laughs> the wonders of the internet, right? Like okay. this totally undoable 20 years ago. Well, somewhere around there. FM 93.5 AM 1150 WNDB in Daytona Beach on live. On Saturday nights, carrying all three hours. I, I used to live in Deltona, which is right next door to Daytona Beach. Nice. Yeah. Uh, WRHI FM 100.1 and AM 1340 in Rock Hill, South Carolina, taking two hours on Saturdays here uh, on delay. So thanks for those who are listening a little later. And the voice of the Pine Belt, News Radio. 98.1 WMXI. I love the FM talkers. Right. Uh, that's in Laurel, Missouri. Uh, I'm taking all three Saturday night hours, and they're taking them delayed. So thanks to everybody. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, something that we've been waiting for for so long here on Free Talk Live. Mm-hmm. This is an announcement that we've been waiting to make on Free Talk Live since we started in November of 2002. Jeez. Now, I'm not sure we ever really imagined that it was possible <laughs> yeah. in November 2002 when, uh, you know, three losers who had nothing better to do on a Sunday night <laughs> than do a radio program for free <laughs> right. on a local FM. <laughs> you know, I mean, we didn't even get a free pizza out of the deal. Nothing. We, you know, we're just in there. Uh, my fiance and I had broken up a couple a few weeks before that, I had time, whatever. Uh, my coworker, he's like, hey, you want to do a show? Sounds good. So we did the show. That night in November of 2002, we did our first show now. I don't know how many years later is this? Eight, like 18, 17 years later, 200 radio stations. Nice. Yeah. First time we can say that. 200 stations. Now, Free Talk Live has always been vigilant at keeping the best books we can on our stations. Like, so if one drops off, our number goes down by one. We could absolutely have 199 stations by tomorrow. We have no idea. Right, right, right. But today, at this moment in time, 200 radio stations. And uh, I can't, I couldn't be any happier. It's, uh, it's, it's really great. So I think it's awesome. And uh, by the way, our Discord room, if you go to discord.freetalklive.com, you get the app there. Man, it's just scrolling by. People are congratulating us. It's a big deal. And I should, uh, you know, and thanks to all those brand new affiliates that uh, that just came on with us. It's so awesome that these new stations are you're welcome. And, and, and your listeners, you, please, give us just a little bit of time here on the show just to understand what we're about. Because we aren't like a uh, your average conservative or liberal station. Or right. show, excuse me. Um, we are a bit different. We here on Free Talk Live, first, we primarily, we believe in free speech. We believe that you have the right to speak your mind. And here on Free Talk Live, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. Now, obviously, you can't get on and just uh, you know start giving some kind of filibustering seminar or anything like that. But, you know, you're going to have a conversation and we're going to talk to you. Secondly, we believe in, the, uh, in human freedom. We believe in the rights of man to make their own decisions in this world. And... Ultimately, that means that in many cases we're standing against some things that are considered time-honored and uh, sacred cows. Right. But 
that's what that you know we try to be as consistent as we can here on on free talk live so thanks to everybody thanks to ian who is the guy that has truly made all of this stuff happen he's the affiliate relations guy the center of our affiliate relations here on free talk live he makes calls um there's no other talk show host in america or at least not one of his stature right free talk live is considered the 27th talk show talk show in the nation i think actually it's a Ian and I are named 27th most important talk show hosts or something is uh, like the terminology. Yep. But, you know, you're not finding guys in the top 25, top 50 making telephone calls they, and calling stations day in and day out. They may ring one up here or there, and that's awesome that they're doing it. I mean, I support that greatly. But right, um, right. Ian has uh, broken the mold. There's nobody else out li- at there like him. Um, now, you know, I do uh, ad sales. I'm not sure that there's talk show hosts that do that either. But we run this business together, this uh, this organization. We run it together. And you guys have – you bust your butts. I mean, I, I've, I've seen this from the outside for the few years that I've been involved. Uh, and I've I, I enjoyed the show for many years before that, and it's it's refreshing to see people that are putting in the hard work day after day, month after month, year after year, and well, it, it's good to see it rewarded. Congratulations! Enough, enough, thank you. That's enough back padding. Um, all right, we're now going to descend into talk radio hell. <laughs> oh, we do that. Yeah, we're going to do that. So uh, there's no way to avoid this topic. It is right now sweeping the country. There are states. As I understand it, several of them, I certainly have heard of Georgia, that are passing laws that say that abortions are now going to begin occurring on uh, – the abortions can no longer occur after the heartbeat. So six weeks, which I surprises me. Six weeks doesn't seem like enough time to determine whether or not you were going – like if you wanted somebody to have an, uh, to be able to make the decision as to whether or not to have an abortion. And I'm pretty sure that plenty, plenty of people don't want them to have that choice. Right. But um, – you know, if you want them to have it, six weeks doesn't seem like enough to really be able to make that decision. Like you don't know that you're pregnant in that amount of time. Because Oftentimes, they have no idea. A miss, you know, you've got uh, you know four weeks, then a missed period, and then uh, two weeks after a missed period, basically. And I'm sure there are many ladies that can attest that sometimes the menstrual cycle is delayed a little longer. So you're really, you know, by the time you really determine, some women determine that they're uh, pregnant. The opportunity for an abortion has passed right now um please go ahead and read the the news before i give any kind of opinion here that's all right this story comes to us from the associated press more heartbeat abortion bans advancing in the south and midwest if a new mississippi law survives a court challenge it will be nearly impossible for most pregnant women to get an abortion there in or potentially in neighboring louisiana or alabama or georgia and I think that traveling now for an abortion is going to be somehow outlawed, at least in Georgia. That's a possibility. The Louisiana legislature is halfway towards passing a law, like the ones enacted in Mississippi and Georgia, that will ban abortions after the fetal heartbeat is detected about six weeks into a pregnancy and before many women know they're pregnant. Alabama is on the cusp of approving an even more restrictive bill. State governments are on course to virtually eliminate abortion access in large chunks of the Deep South and Midwest. Ohio and Kentucky have also passed heartbeat laws. Missouri's Republican-controlled legislature is considering one. The hope is that if more uh, that a more conservative U.S. Supreme Court will approve spelling the end of constitutional right to abortion. I'd like to take issue with that, spelling the end of a constitutional right to abortion. That's not really how how this works, uh, a Associated Press. Well, the um, the Supreme Court determines what's constitutional and what's not. They do, but okay. they don't declare I mean, what rights are. To me, rights are uh, things that are part of the human condition. They are rights that are that belong to us regardless of whether there is a government or not. They declare which rights the government's going to pay attention to. Right. And maybe how the government shall infringe, infringe upon them. Right. And, I mean, you know, it, it actually doesn't say in the Constitution that the Supreme Court is there to interpret the Constitution or to, to interpret laws as being constitutional or anything that, like that. It gives it appellate jurisdiction. Right. Which functionally, I believe, is the same thing. But it is interesting that it was not worded in that fashion. Um they didn't know. They wanted the courts to, to come up with 
they didn't even I don't even know if they wanted the courts. They wanted the legislature to have a have a say in this, but along comes Marbury v. Madison and the Supreme Court case decided that the Supreme Court should decide these questions. Yeah, so um, I, you know, I've got to say I have a very nuanced position on the abortion topic, and I know we're going to get lots of people's opinion on this one. I bring have it no up, doubt. But it's it. All these Republicans have the opportunity to cut taxes and cut government intervention in people's lives, and what do they do? They get right in there on the abortion topic Absolutely. instead of doing what, frankly, I as a Republican would have liked to have seen them done. Mm-hmm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733-855-450. Free is in Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. Call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Chris. Freedom Fest. This is the largest gathering of uh, liberty-oriented people in the world. Freedom Fest's theme this year is the Wild West. It was at a time of liberty and opportunity or lawlessness and violence. Penn Jillette's going to be there, as is Lenore Scanese, Candace Owens, John Mackey, Kevin O'Leary and Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, Stephen Moore, now of the Federal Reserve, Grover Norquist, who's, uh, I think it's um, American Taxpayers Union. I don't know if I have that name right, right exactly, but uh, Grover Norquist, I'd call the greatest liberty activist in America. Big time. Guy gets, does, gets a lot done. Libertarians, conservatives, liberals, open-minded people getting together to uh, hear real debates, share real solutions, and converse freely. They do have some great debates there. I, I really, I've really enjoyed them. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. You go there now, get your tickets, use coupon code FTL50 for a $50 discount. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. All right, you're not convinced. You're like, oh, July 17th to the 20th, I'll just wait or whatever. Well, go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and you can get the five best speeches from last year. You can see Judge Napolitano, Napolitano, Alan Dershowitz, Charlie Kirk, Heather McDonald, John Mackey, all of them for free. And then you can determine whether you want to get your tickets and go July 17th through the 20th out in Las Vegas to see Freedom Fest with us here on Free Talk Live because we're going to be there. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Is there anything you want to say quickly about these uh, these laws before I go to the the phones, uh, Chris? No, let's let's take some calls. All right. So basically, states are passing new laws that restrict abortion more severely and stuff. And I think that as time goes on, as medical technology improves, this bar will be pushed further uh, by by conservatives. Meaning, in, in other words, well, we were able to you know five years ago we were able to detect heart rate. Uh, heartbeats at at six weeks and now we can do it at three there whatever they're four yeah and i so, see so the determination of a heartbeat may uh, push back the, the the date sooner i suspect the the pro-lifers goal is to get it to the point where even the morning after drug is no longer viable i shudder to think that the supreme court is being um the p- people in the supreme court are being appointed almost entirely on this issue but it seems like something that is almost always the the first question that uh, people want to know about a Supreme Court justice. It's the litmus test. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Louis calling in from South Ter- South Dakota. Louis, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. How are you guys? All's well. What's on your mind? Good. Well, here's the thing. In South Dakota here, I've got a few friends that are uh, they're doctors themselves. I personally am not a doctor. Okay. We got to chat the other night. All right. Basically, they said that possible with some of these very late term abortions for the doctor to re- to get the baby out and then show the baby a quick glance to the family and the baby will do a quick look a quick you know assessment of the child and then they get to decide whether or not to keep the child or not you think that's happening and that's that's what i'm told yeah i, mean, I just don't I've believe it been in the room with it it sounds like it's amazing kind of uh, uh you know, like the, the, this sounds like scare tactics to me. I, I, I mean, I can hardly imagine this happens. That somebody right. looks at their baby and decides, kill it, doctor. No, well, what I'm being told is I'll see, you know, does it have a good amount of hair? 
and the eyebrows in the right place, things like that, and then they'll make the decision afterwards. I can't believe uh, it. After making that assessment, that quick I, assessment. I'm completely incredulous, I guess. Um, you know, I mean, I just, I can't believe that somebody would look at their child and determine that. I'd be very surprised if abortion clinics would perform that. You know what I mean? And you know what? Here, here's what I I'd say, Louis. Just to, before we go on, Louis, I want to I want to make this statement. If somebody wishes to uh, execute their child in this fashion, as you're referring to, uh, if yeah. they if they wish to, then they probably should, because those people shouldn't be raising a kid. I don't want them to breed. I agree, because I mean, if you're basing it just off of hair, and this is something I've struggled with, is that. Hair can come and go. <laughs> How's it going, Chris? You know so don't base it on that. The only thing is, the main point is, don't right. base it on the hair. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're what what you're getting at, and it's it's just one of those things. I think that you know, I I don't think. I really don't believe that people that seek an abortion, which I don't, I don't support abortion. I don't. That's me. No, I believe that. Uh, I believe life starts when the uh, the, the cell splits, right? Like I, yeah. I'm, you know, a four celled zygote. Yep, I believe it's a human life. Right. However, I have what I said a nuanced opinion, and by nuanced I mean highly cynical. Mm-hmm. My opinion is, it just ladies and gentlemen, you answer this question for yourself out there in Radio Land. You just answer. Who's more likely to get an abortion, a rich person or a poor person? Who's more likely to get an abortion, a person with an above average intelligence or a person with below average intelligence? Who's more likely to get an abortion, a person who supports the state as the its current size, its current invasiveness, or perhaps an increase in that size or invasiveness? This person I would call a statist. Right. So is the person more likely to be a statist or more likely to be somebody who believes in human freedom? And I believe from the research that I have done, it's a little bit easier to figure out um, income. Uh, it gets a little more difficult to figure out uh, intelligence and even more difficult to determine whether or not somebody is a statist. But I believe in almost all circumstances, all of those situations are the person's like more likely to be a statist. They're more likely to be poor, and they're more likely to be um, uh, they're more likely to be you know below average intelligence. And they're certainly well, for example, of I'm the opinion. Hold they're, on, they're, just they're one just one second. I want to, the last thing, Louis. Um, and they're certainly they don't want the kid. Right? They're not killing the kid because they want it. Right. So now you're talking about an unwanted child who's going to grow up poor, stupid, and believing the government's a good solution to things. Hmm. And some, and sometimes with hair and without it. Yeah, I, I, that's <laughs> what I'm kind of focusing on. Thank you for the call, Louis. <laughs> Louis really obsessed about that hair thing. Something, something yeah. about that. And by the way, I have a full head of hair. Mostly. Well, I mean, it may be a little thinny. You it's, have it's like, just rather gray. Hair covers your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, you know, and I, I used to think that this was a big deal. Look, I held my son in my arms that first moment yeah. that he was born. I mean, obviously, my wife got him first, but <laughs> it wasn't too long thereafter. Yeah. Um, within the first, well, let's call it a few minutes, I got to uh, touch and hold my son, and. You know, this was, by the way, the most taxing night of my life. Watching my wife in this condition of giving oh, yeah. birth, I had never been sort of so, so terrified and disempowered and upset and having yep. to show a strong face. I know it was hard for her, but for me, I was all I could <laughs> hyperventilating. Yeah. Yeah, this was so important to me. This is such an important moment. And yes, he's the most valuable thing, if you're going to call a human being a thing. Right. The most valuable thing in my life. Yes, I consider this to be important. But, you know... People are going to make decisions, and I'm not going to support those decisions. Who's the victim here? Right. The victim is the person who's doing the act. Yeah. It's also the baby. Well, yeah. I, you know, once they're gone, they're gone, right? That's it. There's no turning back. By the way, heaven would be uh, so full of aborted children and, uh, you know, like the sort of not medically not aborted ones that are just, uh, you know, miscarried. Right. Yeah. That would be stuck full of them. Nine out of ten people in heaven. Free talk live. You love Bitcoin. It's the future, right? Well, no, not if everyone stops using it. I mean, think about it. How many places in your town take Bitcoin? One? None? Let's be real. If this Bitcoin thing is ever going to happen, it's going to need your help. The good news is the guys at AnyPay have your back. We built a website called helpmetakebitcoin.com. 
and it's a place you can send any business. And they'll be set up to take Bitcoin in five minutes. HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com It's Free Talk Live. Call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. That's what we do here on Free Talk Live. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. If it's between 1,900 and 2,200 hours. Very good, Mark. In the Eastern time zone. By the way, you just get me started about uh, t- say daylight savings times and time zones <laughs> and these kind of things. And I rattle off. I hate all oh, the God, stuff. No. All the ways that. Time is controlled by our government. But nonetheless, um, you, you can give us a call seven days a week. You don't have to be listening live for those uh, many stations that are added tonight, ra- raising our total to 200 radio stations across yes. the Fruited Plain and beyond the Fruited Plain. Uh, we're on in Guam, for goodness sake. <laughs> Still all in America, mind you. You can hear us outside of the United States at freetalklive.com. But uh, in the, inside the United States, you can hear us in a variety of different locations. On 200 radio stations. You can find those, by the way, to go to affiliates.freetalklive.com. That's affiliates.freetalklive.com. And we believe that to be the most up-to-date affiliate list in the industry. Tell you about Edge Wallet. What is a wallet? Well, I'm not talking about a folding leather billfold. I'm talking about an application for your smartphone. And this wallet is used to contain cryptocurrencies. I believe Edge Wallet to be the best wallet out there. You can get it for the iOS or Android. So just about everybody out out there, any smartphone, I think it's 80, 80 plus percent of Americans have a smartphone mm-hmm. and probably 95% of those smartphones run on iOS or Android. So the vast majority of you listening to me can uh, get this, this, this application. You can buy, sell, trade, and securely hold pretty much any cryptocurrency that you're thinking of. There are some that you can't, but the vast majority of them, um, the vast majority of the major ones. It's user-controlled, meaning you control your money. They don't have control of your money. You can make it so that they can send you a hint for your password, or you can make it so they don't have a hint for your password. They have support for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, the ERC-20 tokens, Monero, Ripple, Stellar, and many more. See, I probably named some you didn't know. It's got a veteran team that's been building since 2014, and they've been working to secure your freedom. The Edge Wallet, the one that I use, Edge.app. Give it a shot. It's Edge.app. One of the things I love about it. Chris, is that you don't need to have some 12 or 24 word mnemonic that you memorize or write down, put in a, you know, some place that could get burned up or whatever right. and you'll lose all your currency. It's a username and password. And, you know, some people want something more secure than that. And that's certainly available. But mm-hmm. I find this to be extraordinarily easy. Edge.app. Let's go to the phones. We've got Sarah calling in from New Mexico. Sarah, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, I, I was told that I heard on the NCR news that the, the Cubans are down in Venezuela involved also. The Cubans are involved in Venezuela. Okay. What does that mean? Well, well, I mean, just as the Russians are down there, hundreds and hundreds of Russians are there, and so are the Cubans helping out. Yeah, Venezuela and the- Cuba and Russia, these are, you know, they've, they've been kind of in cahoots for some time. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, Venezuela, they're both South American countries. And, you know, who would chat? Cuba is not a South American country. It's not even south of the equator. Cuba's like 90 miles from, uh, Havana's like 90 miles from uh, Key West. Well, what I'm saying is they're South American. They they have the same culture and the language. I don't know if the culture's the same, but they do speak Spanish. Yes. I I guess uh, culture's um, historically is defined as language and religion and they probably do share that uh, the cuban government is uh, probably says that everybody's atheist although they're not right <laughs> um and they i think they look the other way over catholicism generally so maybe you're right maybe there's maybe there's an argument for culture sarah according to the venezuelans uh, and the cuban diplomat tell ap that no cuban troops are in venezuela cuban troops no. were you talking about troops well, so, I- 
I don't know how in particular how they were involved, but they but they are down there assisting because they've always been allies. They're both they're both communist countries. As, okay. Uh, for sure. So what do you think about so this? What always, what conclusions do you, do you draw in your mind when you hear that the Cubans are in Venezuela? Well, uh, um, well, obviously, they're down there, you know? Okay. I mean, that's why it's all, they've always been allies for for when they, when they, I mean, when, when they, well, communists always declare that they're communists. And then Venezuela like, declare that they're communists. So they have always been allies. They've always been have, having relations. Um, well, they've, they've declared that they're so. socialist. Uh, I, one thing I think they do have in common is both countries are suffering from uh, trade embargoes and things like that spearheaded by the U.S. You know? The, that's they're, correct. That's correct. And, you know, that's the cause why they have so much economic problems. Oh, no, it's not. Because of the embargo. The reason they have economics they problems have- is they is because people want other people's stuff and they don't understand that socialism doesn't work that's the reason they have economic problems the fact that the united states won't trade with them that's i mean you know they could start all kinds of factories they had some of the world's largest oil reserves they can get pretty much anything they, they want to get done, do. done it's huge people it's a, are yeah. losing weight i'm not going to say starving in venezuela but people are generally losing weight in their they've eaten the zoo animals okay and this isn't because of u.s sanctions they can grow food if they had a system, if they had an economic system that wouldn't just steal the fruits of their labor, Sarah. This is this is the probable, almost certain future of instituting uh, state-run govern, uh, state-run uh, what we call state capitalism, or you know whatever. When the when the state claims, when it socializes different industries, it tends to run them poorly because, well, why should they run them well? Democratic socialism yeah. that'll work. Now, if you want to hear about socialism that works, Sarah, take a look at things like co-ops and um, employee-owned businesses, and things like that. That stuff will work because those people, they have consequences to their actions and they have, uh, you know, they're, 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 responsible for the, they're responsible for what happens. Whereas when the government, you know, working for the government means you never have to say you're sorry. The thing is, I I have a different take on that. Like, but, but I am a communist, so I, my stance is always because of the sanctions, and then right. you, they blame the, <laughs> the the communist system. Like you're blaming the the, the state run, like say the state run system. They the poor workers because they have no accountability. I will agree with you in so far as this, Sarah. I wish the United States government didn't put sanctions on Cuba and Venezuela and Russia and places like that. But, but because um, that way they couldn't blame the sanctions that we'd finally get to see that it's the uh, this this terrible socioeconomic organizational system that that's generally called socialism that that's the problem. Oh yeah, that's, that's the whole point. Nobody could see that the system is failing with all of this uh, sanctions imposed. Agreed. They just see the the ship from Indonesia delivering something to North Korea, and they and they put a stop to it. And, and that's the cause of reason why they're starving. Well, North so Korea is probably, but with North Korea is probably not really socialist. It's probably just, um, you know, just a, an autocracy. Uh, I think it's probably the best way to describe well, but, that. But you're right. Nobody could see that communist country that have free education, all free health care. Everybody would be taken care of because everybody shares. Could, can you I never see that because if they, they all the capitalist countries they choke them to death. We just hear all these horrible things. Sarah, I got to ask you, would you rather Venezuela be a communist country or a Nazi country? Socialist well, I, I, or I Nazi? Which which would which do you think would turn out better? Well, I socialist socialist communist country what what they are now i think that would turn so out everybody talks about the holocaust and that was a tragedy i'm not a denier by any means but i think uh seven eight million jews were killed by i think it was six but all right yeah whatever yeah under under hitler god knows i wouldn't want to guess that low uh chairman mao uh wiped out 20 million uh 30 million 40 million Stalin. over 100 million Stalin. Jeez. yeah uh th- it doesn't even compare socialism QA, kills i don't want to hear it Thanks for the call, Sarah. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I it drives nothing me you can nuts. Do about that stuff. I know. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE and freedom. Some Bernie fan's going to call in. Would you...
Free Talk Live. Call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Chris. It's a live Saturday edition, and you are welcome to call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. We are talking about this uh, situation across the South where states are tightening the restrictions on abortions. And, you know, I try to, I, I kind of try to avoid this topic. I really do. Um, I prefer not to make myself seem cynical and, and loathing of human life. Right. But, well, I guess you have to make that determination for yourself. But, um, yeah, and my position has pivoted more than one time on this topic. I, I'll go on about it here. First, I want to thank the amplifiers. Go to amp.freetalklive.com if you want to support Free Talk Live, which allows you to call in and voice your opinion on national airwaves and 200 radio stations across the country. And I thank the amplifiers, including Kylon Eckert, who's a silver amplifier. Say thank you, Kylon. Thank you, amplifiers. Amp.freetalklive.com. A-M-P as an amplify. We only use it to... Amp, uh, to advertise, market, and promote. That's the, the acronym, amp.freetalklive.com. Any more on this, Chris, that you've got to read? A couple quotes for pro-life folks. These are huge victories, says Sue Liebel, state director of the Susan B. Anthony List, an anti-abortion advocacy group. And I think they're indicative of the momentum and excitement and the hope that's happening with the changes in the Supreme Court and having such a pro-life president. Unquote. Why not make the people that want to force people who don't want to have kids to have kids pay for those kids? I mean, everybody wants somebody to pay for these kids, right? right. Like, here I am paying to send other people's kids to school. I'm paying to, se- to, to feed other people's kids that can't, uh, they have not managed to put, put together the life skills to earn enough money to feed their family. Perhaps they're too busy spending their money on cigarettes and booze. I don't know. What about incentives? What about the incentive that... If I have more children, I'll get a bigger government check. There's certainly it's certainly that. Well, yeah, that's that's a big thing. I mean, it's a bad idea, but it, yeah, it's what happens. And and what we have is a, a failure of incentives or or unforeseen circumstances to these ideas that are designed to be good and warm and fuzzy or generate voters, uh, depending on your cynicism. I wish that people wanted the children that they create i wish people would take responsibility for their actions right i wish we lived in a world like that but i can tell you as a young man had i been confronted with the situation of a you know a pregnancy say in high school or something like that i certainly was prepared to you know pony up the money for an abortion if that's what it came down to yeah as when i held my young son in my arms my opinions changed I suddenly changed my mind on that topic. But then again, over time, I have come to the conclusion that the world isn't all like me. The world isn't all as responsible as I am. The world, um, you know, people are in different places in their lives and they have different feelings when it comes to this particular topic. There's a lot of different aspects to this. And I I still, I I believe, I I hope the choice is, I'm pro-choice if the choice I hope is going to be life. Um, But when I object to problems that the government has created, like that uh, misincentive to have more kids and get more money, those are separate issues. It doesn't mean uh, that has nothing to do with abortion. That has a problem with government. Let's go to the phone. Scott Angel calling in from Indy to listen to WIBC. Angel, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey. So. I live in Alabama. I'm a truck driver. I'm driving through. Thank Andy you for your today, service, and and Angel. Thank you for Thanks. all the truck drivers out there that are keeping America moving. Everything you're getting, ladies and gentlemen, at the store that you're buying, brought there by a trucker. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Do you have children, Angel? I do. I have five. Oh, and my. I'm taking care of all five of my kids. Has I anybody ever made a mother trucker kids. joke of, with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I imagine they old. have. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I've, been, I've, I've always taken care of my kids. I was adopted when I was little because my mama ran out on me. Uh. So, but I'm glad she didn't abort me. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad yeah. I had the uh, 
the chance to be a better mother than my, my biological mother was. My grandmother, who adopted me, was awesome. She was like the best mother on earth. I to- I'm i totally pro-life. Um, there's no way I would, like, I can't even conceive the idea of having an abortion. No ifs, ands, or buts, you yep. know? Um, I do agree that women need to quit, keep their legs closed and quit, um, you know, getting pregnant if they don't want the kids. Um what do you, what do you think about birth control? Do you think they, they you know, could maybe more be more responsible in the uh, use of that? As uh, men could too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Like I, I've told my boys. Like I've got two boys. My two youngest ones are boys. I've told them if you don't want no kids, um, you better put um put a um raincoat on it because yep. um you're going to end up raising a baby because I will not let there be an abortion go on in my family because we don't work like that. So, um, and he just, they just know, they just know, and, and, but they're in very stable relationships and they're both fixing to get married. So how old are um, these? I, I imagine you said they're youngest. I guess I, I, I imagined other things. How, how old are these young boys? I've got an 18 year old and that is getting married, um, at the end of next year. And I've got a 21 year old that's getting married in the summer of next year. Awesome. Angel, thank you so much for this call. It's uh, folks like. Angel, I mean, like, this lady is the heart of America. Right. Right. Hardworking lady. Raised her kids right. Love them. Um, your calls. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE, as in freedom. Chris, go on. I'm sorry I was on the wrong page for abortion uh, uh, rights supporters. Meanwhile, the trend is ominous, says Diane Durzes, owner of Mississippi's Soul Abortion Clinic. The Jackson Women's Health uh, Organization, quote, Mm -hmm. I think it's certainly more dire than it's ever been. They smell blood, and that's why they are doing this. Already, Mississippi mandates a 24-hour wait between an in-person consultation and seeing a doctor. That means that women must make at least two trips to the clinic, often traveling long distances. Right. I mean, if if there's one clinic in the state of Mississippi, then you're talking about, you know— You've just raised the cost. I don't know what a hotel room costs necessarily in Jackson, but I'm willing to bet it's somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty or eighty bucks. Sure, at, you have the cheapest of them. Yeah, I, I've I've traveled around, and it's difficult to find a hotel room that costs less than sixty dollars. As much as it it pains my my cheap little heart to pay it, uh, you know, it's it's just difficult to find them. Alabama lawmakers postponed until next week a vote on a proposal that would make performing. Uh, nearly all abortions a felony that measure has passed the state house and the senate suspended debate thursday amid a heated dispute over whether exemptions for rape and incest should be stripped from the bill yeah this was an interesting one uh, where they apparently had some kind of uh situation where they you know maybe might, might have been out of order might not i don't know there's some you know robert's rules of order argument on whether the stripping of this provision of rape and incest uh you know seems like the the easiest one and usually uh, abortion uh, you know the pro-lifers will determine that uh well yeah we'll give you rape and incest but in this case um on this bill not so much yeah and, and it's not gonna make it it's not gonna cut muster with courts though i don't think so either but but it is interesting how far it's like there just there's it's impossible for there to be a compromise on this issue. Yeah, well, th- that's what it all comes down yeah. to is is that neither side is going to be happy um, right. in this. And not that I'm you know whatever. I don't think compromises are necessarily the great. Let's go to, to Joe real quick here in um, Indy. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I I think you know you're you're seeing these you're seeing these uh, restrictive abortion laws in these different states that you're talking about. But I think what you, I think what it, what, what's happening is it's an answer to or it's a response to the partial birth abortion laws that states like New York are passing. I think they're doing. I think New York is doing it just to get a rise out of out of conservative people, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, you like you like this? You you guys, this is this is what you want? You like Trump? Okay, well, this is what we're going to do." Yeah. And I think, and I think, and I think what you're seeing is. Georgia, that kind of Bible Belt state, yep. they're saying, yeah, well, we're going to respond this way. Right. 
Yeah, it, it might very well be the case. I, I, I don't know. I've heard of these uh, provisions. I haven't delved into it deeply. It, it's not an issue that um, affects me uh, very much. But I've heard of these partial birth, birth abortion uh, bills. And yeah, it may very well be a salvo in return. Likely the federal courts won't deal with it. But, um, yeah, Joe, thanks yep. for that insight. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Yep. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, as in Free Talk Live. Don't you hate that feeling in the pit of your stomach when the police pull you over? Most people have no idea how to handle it properly, and they promptly get fed into the municipal fee-generating meat grinder. Or maybe you recall that feeling you get when you go to the mailbox and see one or more letters from the IRS. You get a sense of impending doom, don't you? So let me ask you, if you could learn how to use the law to beat the IRS, traffic tickets, almost any courtroom scenario, collectors, credit card debt, and even mortgage debt because of fraud perpetrated against you, would that be worth knowing about? Don't laugh. Investigate. Check out the life-changing benefits of the Lighthouse Law Club at their website, lighthouselaw.com. Dot club. That's lighthouselaw.club. And while you're at it, visit the Lighthouse Law Club YouTube channel. You might be in for a pleasant surprise. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. It is the live Saturday night edition of Free Talk Live, and you are free to call in and talk live here on the airwaves. That's why we do it. That's what we do, and that's this is why we do it. We want you to have the ability to call in and talk about what you want. It's Mark with you. And Chris. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE, as in freedom. And Ian, our normal Saturday night host who's sitting here in the first chair, he is uh, off in Tokyo right now. But we are celebrating. He is, uh, he's given me the opportunity to announce. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know when exactly. <laughs> he said, go ahead and announce it. We are now on 200 radio stations across the U.S. It's been a Two, long time coming. 203. 203. Is that what the... That's the official count. Affiliates.freetalklive.com website says. Well, we'll probably stay above it because it'd be hard to lose three affiliates in a given time period before we... The way we add and subtract affiliates... Sure. We'll probably not dip below. Just saying. Yeah. I mean, I could get on the air and I could say something completely outrageous and maybe <laughs> I drop a few. I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, never know for sure. We have talked about this evening... Families' rights to make decisions over medical procedures for their kids. We've also talked about, I guess, another medical procedure that uh, is a mother getting an abortion, a family medical procedure. Uh, in some some circles, certainly. Kind of a sick way. Yep. Talked about abortion, the way its uh, laws are changing in the South, and I guess they were changing in the North. One caller uh, made the point. And you've got a story about, I guess, some bust of some... Uh, airline employees or something i've got a story about keeping america safe okay because that's always important this story comes to us from trending in travel nine dallas fort worth airport employees admit to drug conspiracy laws so thank goodness we've got our fbi on task and homeland security nine airline employees so when the FBI does some investigation, sometimes, you know, they're really uncovering some great stuff. I'm not saying that the uh, the men and women of the Federal Bureau of Investigations aren't necessarily are always wrong every time. But there are times when it kind of seems like they're almost the ones that are doing all the crime and they're just finding somebody to take the fall for it, you know, where they come up with a plan. They come up with the, the the munitions or whatever the drugs in this case. They, they 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 come up with everything, and then they find somebody to take a fall for it. What's going on here? I'm not saying that this may be one of those situations. Let's just get into it. Nine airline employees at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport were arrested about a year ago. This is just coming out for plotting to smuggle drugs out of the airport. Okay. Since then, they've admitted to be willing to smuggle anything on board a commercial airline for money, including drugs, weapons, and plastic explosives. That's pretty scary. It is. The nine employees included a baggage scanner, 
baggage handler, and other employees who could monitor bags being placed on and off Spirit Airlines and Envoy Air aircrafts. A 10th employee involved in the ring is a fugitive. These folks, and this is a quote, quote, these folks sold their positions, betrayed the public trust, abused their positions at the airport to make a dollar, and put everyone at risk, unquote. Yeah. Assistant U.S. Attorney George Leal said during a detention hearing. I'm not sure anybody case, who works uh, like in these situations really thinks that they have the government's, uh, the, the, the public's trust. I mean, are we paying people for gov- public trust? Because in a lot of cases, these are not particularly well compensated employees. Well, and, just by their positions, Mark. Come right. on. This is undoubtedly. And, and here's, a, here's a direct quote uh, from the U.S. Uh, attorney. Quote, they put the safety of the public in danger, unquote. So there. The employees, nine employees, believe they were smuggling methamphetamine into commercial airlines for Italian organized crime located in other states. <laughs> is there still Italian organized crime? Or is this some just trope that it's uh, sort of whipped up? Um so, first off, if you're talking about Italian organized crime, people believe that there's some kind of code that goes uh, goes beneath it, right? Sure, I like mean, Casa Nostra. Right. I mean, ultimately, these people are, uh, or at least this, this legend, I'm not even sure they exist anymore, but they, they're just a competitive government, ultimately, right? A government is an organization that claims a monopoly privilege and the use of violence over a given landmass. There you go. What is the functional difference between a gang... <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, um, you know, somebody like the Cosa Nostra or whatever, um, who has a, a sort of a moral underpinning to it. Sure. And a government, when the Cosa Nostra says, hey, hey, this is our block here, you know, and you can't do business here <laughs> unless you pay us. You know what I mean? Con- I mean, what's the difference between taxes and protection money? Uh, protection money is generally more affordable. <laughs> well, it may be. I don't know. There you go. Uh, the nine employees. In actuality, the nine employees. And by the way, so they first uh, they they kind of threw in the terminology, um, you know, C four plastic explosives here. Absolutely. To make sure that I was good and scared, but they said that they were arrested for methamphetamines. Um, oh, so- it, was a, it was part of this drug smuggling ring, but they were willing. They might be willing to smuggle plastic somebody explosives said, too. Somebody in here, probably the stoolie. Right, he says, "Hey, we'd have done anything for a dollar. Right, just make sure I get a little less time than everybody else." Uh, so, I, at this point, I'm not interested in what they would have done. I'm interested in what they did do, and what they did do apparently is to distribute fake uh, methamphetamines. Right. Well, and all nine employees were part of an FBI undercover operation. The methamphetamine was fake. During the detention hearing, Ray Harrison, lead FBI agent in the case, said, quote, on each transaction, the undercovers who were Italian and portrayed themselves as Italian organized crime figures (laughs) pulled out the kilos, showed it to them, counted it, told them it was crystal meth and told them if they were if uh, if they were tampered with, it would they would not be paid the second half payment once it landed in their destination. Now, so. In a nutshell, they were there was never any meth. There was never any plastic explosive. It's interesting that the laws are written in such a fashion that you can get um, convicted of trafficking some drugs when you did not traffic drugs. There were no drugs. Right, there were no drugs. But on the other hand, I think it's also interesting and a bit of an insult to Italian Americans all over the nation that they decided to do this <laughs> as Italian mobsters. Uh, yeah, you know, my... My wife is uh, Italian, um, half Italian, and her um, father is 100% Italian. And no. Well, and I, I don't know what this, this is. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, these, people's, these people have an Italian last name. Right, right, right. And the, you know, the jokes that these people make at mealtime on, like, holidays, I, I, I think that they're intended to specifically unnerve a waspy kid like me. Right. But, like, you know, the cement shoes and, and <laughs> <laughs> taking care of the problem and this kind of thing. Well, this goes on. At one point, Nelson Pablone, 47, the, hey. the quote, ring re- ringleader, <laughs> even considered having a fellow airline worker involved in the smuggling killed because he thought the man was working with law enforcement quote he had actually reached out to his brother down in san antonio to act as a hitman unquote 
Harrison, the FBI agent, said. Now, keep in mind, there was no smuggling. There was nothing. There. So what? If this guy was actually talking to, to law enforcement, maybe he would have uncovered the fact that they weren't doing anything wrong. Well... Law enforcement doesn't is, is not above, uh, you know, throwing in some some fake stuff here and then you know convicting people for trafficking it or whatever. Yeah, and it happens all the time. It's not just you know drug smuggling and things like this. And this story is absolutely absurd. So, uh, what do you think? Do you think that the FBI is wasting our time with this? What, they're what? wasting our time and and God knows how much money, how much taxpayer money. It's no different than when when you hear folks when you hear that the FBI has solved another terrorist plot. It's happened on U.S. soil, and we hear this with some regularity, at least once a year. There's some story. Presumably the terrorists were willing to harm people. These folks here, at this, none of them are accused of doing anything that harm, any more harm than somebody who works at a local drugstore that's uh, dishing out prescribed medication that came from a doctor. This is just unprescribed medication, essentially. Essentially. Yeah, it's bathtub gin, but the reason it's bathtub gin is because the government doesn't allow people to buy this stuff legally. The number 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE, as in freedom, here on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. Live Saturday edition. Come on and call in. The number is 855-450-3733. That's 855 450 free is in freedom. It's Mark with you. And Chris. By the way, you can also use our Discord lines at discord.freetalklive.com. There you will find an, an app that you can upload and download on your phone, and you can use it to call in uh, Free Talk Live. And you send a lot better. It's uh, discord.freetalklive.com. And we are talking about, oh, quick, before we go on with the, the story, I want to tell you about uh, ForkFest. This is the festival that we're having at Rogers Campground, June 13th through the 18th. So it's coming right up. It's uh, if you want to camp with other liberty-minded individuals in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire, you can, you know, come with your RV or, uh, you know, you can have a tent or a motel room, whatever you want to do. It's decentralized. Everybody's doing what they want. No one's being charged for anything. No one is in charge of anything. People are giving speeches. People are, uh, you know, holding seminars. There's one guy who's doing man camp where you can learn how to forge uh, like with a hammer and beat on metal and stuff. Uh, another guy's doing drone things. People are serving food. It's ForkFest.Party. You want to come and find out more? Since third year, we go up there and do free talk live, forkfest.party. And it's a party had by all. Go on, Chris. There's more about this story where they're, the FBI is pretending to be the Italian mafia, huh? And, uh, hey, you want to run a little meth, make a little money, huh? huh? Well, what you'll do is you'll make me, uh, you'll give me a promotion at the FBI, huh? It looks good when I bust people who otherwise would not have done anything. Because they did do nothing. They did not smuggle meth, even though that's what the charges are over. And they were uh, basically they told... They probably would have smuggled meth, but they, they prob- did not. <laughs> but they did not. They were never given meth to smuggle, yeah, yet yes. this is the uh, remarkable break that the FBI has made. And uh, nine people are going to go to jail, most likely, for, to the, uh, for this. And I'm not saying that these people don't need some kind of stern talking to, a finger <laughs> wagging, as it were. Um but, you know, I mean, they, they obviously abused their positions and shouldn't have been doing this and all that stuff. But, I mean, are we really served as the public where young men, uh, it appears, are, you know, tossed into a situation, lured by money? What a surprise. Right. Some people can be lured by money into doing things that, although they don't have a victim, might be considered illegal. So here's a hypothetical. Let's say that you had, say, God forbid, you did some government contract and you knew that security was an utmost importance and you would your livelihood somehow would rely on on being reliable. I, I just can picture this as an internal thing where you would say, you know what, it's almost like a secret shopper. Go around, ask our employees, see if you can trick one of them into like smuggling some meth on a plane. Yeah. And then if if they do, if they say yes, 
then HR needs to talk to them, and we may need to get involved. We may need to uh, look at how they got hired. What what did we miss in the background check? Questions like this. But no, the FBI makes a literally a federal case out of it uh, and threatens to throw these guys in jail. The airline workers agreed to plead guilty to drug conspiracy charges in a Dallas federal court. The ringleader, Nelson Pablone, 47. Hey, Nelson Pablone. Faces up to 40 years in Whoa. sentencing. So 40 years in sentencing for no crime. As for the safety of DFW Airport, spokeswoman Cynthia Vega says Everybody's that, perfectly fine here. Says that some changes see. have been made. Unbelievable. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. Eric's calling in from Texas. Listen on, tune in. Eric, you're on Free Talk Live. Eric. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm calling in from Houston. How are you guys? All's well. What's on your mind? Good. Good, good. Well, uh, I was just calling because um, I'm actually in favor of the wall that Trump wants to build. Why is that? Um, and I live here in Texas. Um, I mean, it just depends on, uh, I guess, which perspective you're looking at it from. But uh, Well, your perspective. You know, What's your yeah, big reason? Uh, well, why, the, why do you want a wall? <laughs> well, I think Bill Gates said it best uh, about... Uh, in the next 15 years, we're going to see more innovation than we've seen in the last 250 years. Will it be inside so, the U.S.? As far as AI, what's that? Will it be inside the U.S. or outside? Inside the U.S., okay. most likely with AI I'll take your word for different it. things. And, you know, um, and workers are going to be fired um, and no longer low-skilled workers won't have a job. And if we have a whole bunch of people pouring into our country, how are we going to pay where are they going to work? And if there's a, a welfare system, how are we going to pay? So for you're them? playing amateur so economist. So you're you're determining, uh, even though we have the lowest um, lowest employment unemployment in my lifetime right now, you're concerned that maybe five, ten, fifteen, twenty years down the road we won't have as good. But I mean, these people are also sneaking back across the border in many cases. Mm-hmm. Um, every year, people are sneaking both directions. Um, I mean, won't they just leave if they need a, if they if they can't find work? Can't get a job. Well, I mean, if Congress would pass a law that there was no incentive, then I think we would agree completely. Oh, they, I, they I have. agree completely. Well, I would also go you know. further to say that Congress has passed many laws uh, that make it illegal for them to do all sorts of things. No, no, that I, doesn't I, change anything. The, the the problem is is the Congress is handing out a bunch of freebies. And then everybody's getting upset that stray cats come by and eat eat out of the the, the free cat bowl, right? Right. right, um, right. Well, what is what a surprise! <laughs> I would say this, Eric: the wall isn't going to solve that problem. You know, whether I agree or disagree with you is immaterial. I, um, you know, I I worked for the state of Florida, uh, you know, in some capacity, have have some uh, experience with prisons, and I can tell you, it isn't walls and fences that keep people in prisons; it's the guard on the other side with the gun. So if a wall or a, or a fence or whatever is put up, within a day, there's going to be holes in it if it's just left unattended. So building a wall isn't going to do anything. You've got to staff. You have to have the staff there to, to protect the wall. If you have the staff, then you don't need the wall because the staff is already there. So the wall is just a make work program. It's a boondoggle. But if there's no incentive for them to come, then they would. Then we don't need a wall. Well, but we the incentive part of the wall, part of the incentive is right. employment, and there's a demand. I, I hate to say this, and people hate to hear it, but there's a demand for low skilled employees to do low skilled jobs. Sure. And if if you want proof of that, look at the fact that sixty to seventy percent of our agriculture is not performed by Americans. It, it's performed by illegal aliens and legal aliens. Legal too. Yeah, I um, see that a lot here in Texas. I'm not even going to lie. They're at Home Depot and they want work, and I I feel for them. But yet we have homeless people all over the streets of Houston who don't want to like work. Yeah, but if the homeless Houston. people wanted well, the job, yeah, the homeless people wanted the job, they'd be out there at Home Depot. Uh, like they say well, they do. But if they wanted, you you know, a man well, is telling the truth by his actions. 
If if look, if homeless people were worth employing and if they wanted the job, then employers would find ways to get a homeless people out there to do it. But, you know, the, the newspapers and online uh, news outlets, they're full of these stories of people, uh, homeless people, beggars, uh, I don't know what else to call them, that are offered opportunity yeah. to do work and they, ret- they turn it down because it's too low pay. Well, well, that's almost too bad. We should just pick them up, put them in a bus and say, this is where you're going to work, this oh. is where you're going to stay, and then you can leave, but you got to come back. Slavery. How are you going to leave? That'll work. Yeah, well, I mean, Thanks for the call, paid. Right? Paid. Free Talk Live. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Ward. Looking for a great real estate investment? Consider New Hampshire, which is ground zero for the liberty movement. Your first call should be to Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. He's more than just a real estate agent. He's your New Hampshire concierge. Where are the best places to live? Do you want farm, city, the burbs, or forest? Do you want a duplex or multifamily building so that renters pay your mortgage? There are homes in all price ranges in New Hampshire, and Mark can help with financing, too. Invest in liberty and property. Mark Warden can help. PorcupineRealEstate.com It's Free Talk Live. And you're free to call in and talk live here on the airways. That's what we do. It's Mark with you. And Chris. And let's go right to the phones, Chris. We've got uh, got, got, got no housekeeping to take care of here. Let's go right to the phones. We've got uh, Tetris calling in on the Discord lines. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening all across the Fruited Plain, listen to how clear this sounds. This is this could be you if you called in on the Discord lines at discord.freetalklive.com. It takes a little more work at, initially, but then after that it's easier. discord.freetalklive.com. Tetris, what's on your mind? Um, I was wanting to talk about the Loan Shark Prevention Act, which is being proposed by Bernie Sanders and Occasional Cortex, which would basically <laughs> use the postal service as a bank. Hold on, loan. What? What? Do, what do the post? What's the post office have to do with uh, loan sharks? So basically, you... the bill not only caps the interest of payday lenders, but the argument is a lot of uh, lower income communities don't have banks because okay. it's not considered profitable All right. so what they want to do is they want to make it so the postal service can give banks i'm sorry not banks loans in place of banks and because so the that post way office these people already, have money the post office already exists so it has locations it has locations that it could go in and do and and by the way who doesn't want to wait in those lines right I mean, another hey. opportunity to get in more more longer lines. Well, oh, post office lines; those are the best kind at all. I, I mean, only to be outdone by the DMV. True. And who does? And who doesn't love that <laughs> pen with the chain to the table? <laughs> right. I mean, I'm at a bank. Uh, what is it? I, I'm looking at it right here. TD Bank. And I'm not doing a commercial for it or anything like that, but this bank is open on the weekends. It uh, is open late. It gives away free pens. There's like buckets of pens sitting there. <laughs> they want you to take their pen. It's not, no longer are you shamed for not having a pen or anything like that. They just take one with you. Please. Here's, here's a sucker. You know, um, whatever it takes. Dum-dums. Yeah. But they have their but own. When makes, they have their own when, custom suckers. They're purple and green yes. to match their colors. Yes, they do. And what's weird to me is the postal service loses like I think four billion dollars a year. Yeah. How exactly are they going to, you know, get people that come in take a loan and then just never pay it back? How are they going to make money then? The right. post office is in an unenviable position in so much as they uh, have this mandate at which. Uh, the, the government mandates their pricing, and but they also enjoy a monopoly on first class first mail. First class mail. Yep. So you know they live in this sort of nether world as a quasi governmental organization. People will tell you they're private. They're not. If they were private, then they'd offer banking services or not offer banking services at their whim. Nobody's telling the local grocery store whether or not they can offer banking services. And also, a a huge, fact, huge Walmart, union shop too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they are a big union shop. Walmart offers banking services now, and they do it in low income. I'm a member of their bank, right. actually. I, I hear good things. I don't know. I'm not a member of their bank. I, I, I'm a credit union guy. If I can get a credit union, I'm going to use it. But, I mean, it just 
much. <laughs> you know, this is just uh, this is just the government attempting to pound another square peg into another round hole. I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, I I don't know what's Bernie Sanders know about banking. Why is he making these uh, these determinations? The post office well, should be deciding been, this. He's been advocating this for decades because apparently, and I'm not too sure on this, but. I've heard that the U.S. Postal Service did this for about 60 years. Oh, okay. Okay. But, then why were they told but, to stop? Um, I have no clue. Right, Probably this because is the, thing, the government this is that, realized they sucked at everything and they I, would also suck at banking. I, do, I don't have an opinion on the post office running a bank because the post office should be able to run a bank if it wants to because the post office should be a private organization that is not subsidized or um by the government in some in in so far as their uh the rents go on their postal buildings they should not be they should not have their prices capped by congress they shouldn't have a mandate for their pension funds that is any different than any other organization which they do um and you know they should just be able to do what they want to me, what they are, I, I see them for what they are. A waste of money. Well, they're a an ad venue, a government subsidi- subsidized ad venue. They deliver junk mail and occasionally other things. But they are, um, you know, they're, they're a cheap way, a socialized manner, a government subsidized way for companies to get their paper to you. And I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's all it And is. you can't get it to stop. You know, you can't just go to the post office and be like, I don't want any more mail like Cosmo Kramer did on Seinfeld because they'll just tell you, no, you have to get your mail. Well, I I did pull it off at one point. I built a house and I never put a post off uh, a postal box in front of it. If you just rip it out from in front of your house, then they can't deliver mail to you anymore. I was always told that that was against the law and destroying the, you know, ripping off the postal box was destroying government property. Nope. You, it can't possibly be the case, because how, how come it I can put a new one in? So, uh, actually, the Postal Service maintains postal banking from 1911 to 1967, allowing citizens to open small savings accounts at local post offices. So Now, was that managed by the regional post office or the federal government? Uh, let's see. Um, this allowed citizens to open a small savings bank, actually a better approach than partnering with banks. They say, uh, this is coming to us from the nation. The system was so successful oh, yes. that after world war two, it had a balance of $3 billion, roughly 30 billion in today's dollars. Congress I I consider that a lot or a little, I don't even know. Congress did away with postal banking in the 1960s, but post offices in other countries, including Japan, Germany, China, and South Korea, provide banking services so again again if the post office wants to provide banking services then the post office should be able to do that but i shouldn't be taxed one cent to subsidize in any way it just makes me nervous because it's basically being done as a way to combat payday lending which people think is a problem it's like nobody's telling you to take the loan right and payday lending needs to be called what it is it's banking for poor people if you're taking a payday loan if you're you going and getting uh, your check cashed at a payday place it's likely that you have um you know probably made some poor decisions when it comes to banking prior to that and i'm not saying that i consider banks to be delightful organizations I, I have been there, ladies and gentlemen. I have bounced checks. I know what it's like. But you got to pay them, and you got to keep your checking account uh, solvent. You don't use your checking account with your debit card. You should have a separate checking account for paying your bills and then a, an account for running uh, your debit card. I'm going to be a little more skeptical when I say this is just a blatant attempt to nationalize banks. This is banks the, are nationalized. I know that. I know that. But this is this is a forced nationalization of a level of of bank customer that has not doesn't play. They don't play. They don't go through the big banks that are already subsidized. These guys deal with private individuals. Well, they can now get this final portion. Right. My suggestion would be learn about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and be your own bank. Right. Instead of a uh, uh, a uh, what we call a um, corporatist banking structure where the government, you know, finds some banks too big to fail and bails them out if they have problems, but not the rest of us, just the banks. Right. Um, then we, w- we would have a socialist banking system where the government is the bank. Yes. Um, I agree. It's the just gover- another attempt to take over another aspect of our lives. Yeah, they have yes. no business. Uh, the government has no business doing this. But the post office is quasi 
um, uh, private. It's, uh, you know, they, people will tell you it's somewhat private. I say make it totally private. And if they want our open banking services, fine. I Which never use the post office to deliver anything because I find that FedEx gets, gets it to my door way faster. Individuals rarely use the post office, but... When If you start running a business, like if you were doing an eBay business or something like that, you'd probably find very quickly that it's the post office, since because it's subsidized, because it has these mandated rates and that sort of thing, it just gets it there a lot less costly. I... FedEx and UPS, they may have slower delivery systems, but it just costs more. And people don't want to pay it if they can avoid it. People don't like paying shipping charges. You can, you can have a higher product with free, quote unquote, free shipping, right. and people will buy that more often. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it, Tetris. Yep. The number is 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE, as in Free Talk Live. Or you could use the Discord line. Sound great, like Tetris just did there. It'd just go to discord.freetalklive.com and download the app. It's pretty self-explanatory from there. Discord.freetalklive.com. It's the final segment of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Chris. Check out amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com, where you can support Free Talk Live and our mission, which is to allow people to talk about whatever they want to talk about on the radio and to spread the ideas of liberty far and wide. That's our goal. That's what we do. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, uh, this is the final segment of the show. And we'll be heading home after this. But I don't feel like I did when I worked in, you know, so many other jobs that I worked in. I've had a whole variety of them Mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, And I was, you know, looking at the clock, ready to go and all those kinds of things. This job, so awesome. And it's the listeners that have made it so awesome. Right. And the reason that we're on 200 radio stations now. Thank you, amplifiers. Thank you, listeners. Thank you for allowing me to do this work for since 2002. Crazy. I, wasn't getting, I wasn't getting paid to do it since 2002. I probably didn't. I, I really didn't do this as a job job until somewhere around 2008. So that was like six year period where I was doing it as a hobby before that. <laughs> so I guess I put my time in. Let's go to Joe calling in from Michigan, listening on Global Star Radio. What is that, Joe? It's a, um, <clears throat> it's a, a talk. A radio program that I call my phone, call in on my phone, okay, and just listen to their stuff. Oh, okay, nice. I'm not familiar with it, but I'm glad they're carrying us. Um, I got an idea for the post office. All you right, know how everybody's always worried about their emails and stuff. They're always being hacked and copied and mm-hmm. uh, phishing scams and you name it. Well, the post office ought to set up a division and offer email accounts. You know, under federal protection so that the emails will have all the same federal protections that the mail does. Because we all know that post, U.S. Postal mail has a ton of federal protections on it. So, yeah, there's something called mail know, fraud. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but like sending lies through the mail or something. Yes, you'll go to jail. So they, got, they got all kinds of stuff from what I understand. But anyways, if they started an email service and put it under the is a fancy word, auspices of the mail, yeah. so they would have all these federal protections, charge $10 or $15 a year, or some kind of subscription, and then maybe they can become solvent. But the thing is, if it's protected by federal law, then anybody who starts messing with it is going to be messing with the law at the same time. So, you know, they can get themselves in a lot of trouble. And they could probably, and honestly, I heard this, this idea from the guy that invented the email, he was on a talk show. I was listening yeah. to him. He invented it in like 1992 or something like that. He wrote a proposal, sent it to the post office like 15 years ago, and they just said no. <laughs> yeah, because that was originally it was his idea, but it, it makes complete sense to me. Right. You know how sometimes different people invent things and they didn't know that somebody else had already invented them. I've done this a million times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's my my friend Kathy came up with the exact same idea. It was when. Uh, after faxes, after the post office lost out on faxing, how, you know, instead of just having the post office provide a fax service, if if people needed it, 
didn't want to buy a fax machine, but they need to receive a fax. She came up with the same idea for email, and she took it to her her bosses, and just yeah, that's not going to happen. I I don't think it's a terrible idea, honestly. If you can, I mean, because it's a governmental agency, yeah. and yeah, if they offer all these services, basically the spammers might be scared to spam somebody, right. and then people would want that's this spam free site. Uh, right. I don't know if I, it might be too late at this point, Joe. Right. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but it's just an idea. And plus, they might be able to make money off it. They're, the one caller says they're $4 billion annually in debt. Maybe they might be able to become solvent. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind having the protection of that, you know. I would I would probably pay for it. Oh, there you go. There's one person. <laughs> Somebody at the post office is listening. Thank you for the call, Joe. Thanks, man. Really appreciate that. Let's go to David calling in from New Mexico. David, you're on Free Talk Live. Me, poor up. <laughs> That's right. You're making fun of the uh, Japanese uh, government confiscating my maple syrup oh, uh, when I, I, uh, I was in Tokyo just uh, just recently. No, I don't get that. Um, my, I think I, I think I heard you uh, misspeak earlier when the beginning of the program. Uh, you said something like uh, my normal co-host Ian. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's a completely what? unfair what? statement, yeah, isn't it? Tongue in cheek. Yes. Yes, my, yes, yes. He's my yeah, abnormal co-host. My, my, my regular, my regular. <laughs> right. Of course, then, then, then we might be getting into his, uh, his uh, gastrointestinal health. Uh, I guess. So he I used to what... keep a calendar in the studio where he would write his bowel movements on, um, like you'd, you know, he'd notate them <laughs> on the calendar. You know, I'm looking at the uh-huh. times written on there, and I'm like, Ian, what are these times here on the what? calendar? And no. I knew what they were. Because I know what kind of guy he is, right? Uh, and he, you know, revealed to me what they were. And sometimes you hate to be right. It, <laughs> I've still got a picture of this. I took a picture so that I would have this. I don't know what, oh, from what year it's God. from, you know, two thousand eight or something. So then, then is, is he indeed your regular? <laughs> he was pretty regular at the time. He 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 tries to eat a salad uh, every other day or something like that. Um, and it was just good yeah. for a young man who's single. I'm I'm impressed. I'd eat fewer salads if my wife wasn't around. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank God for the ladies. Anything else, David? Really? Yeah, uh, only in New Mexico. So there was a there's a, uh, a sheriff judge, judge sheriff, uh, judge sheriff Heath White. Okay. Uh, if you remember, he he was the one that um, he helped himself to one hundred and sixty two thousand dollars worth of uh, taxpayer money. Um, this this he, happens. He had, Is this yeah, the guy who's going to uh, judge his own case? How how did you get that already ahead of me saying it? <laughs> go ahead, please tell us. He he. Uh, well, no, you go go ahead. I, I'm interested to find out how you uh, came upon this. Yeah, so, I, was, I was. I was just perusing the news. And you I do came, this for a living. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the story was that the the sheriff who had been found guilty, I guess, of embezzlement uh, through some round robin selection, was uh, he was selected to be the judge of his own case. Yeah. So uh, he's a judge and yeah. a sheriff, which is, oh, that's not a problem. Nah, you know, no biggie. The, you know, somebody who's both the executive, <laughs> the chief executive in a county, and um, a, a chief judicial officer in a county. And a criminal. And, a, yeah, this is a problem. A legend. You can't do all these things. <laughs> you can only be one. Well, he, well this, 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 sir, is New Mexico. We, <laughs> do whatever we, want. We, we do whatever we want out here since we are not part of the United States. If I come own. to New Mexico, I'm not bringing any maple syrup because I don't trust you people. <laughs> ha, we have our own maple syrup, sir. <laughs> what, we, we've squeeze it out of cactuses? We, 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 have, we have stolen plenty of it from people going through on I-40 and I-25. We yeah. take... Maple syrup at will, sir. Yes, well, you know, that's Whenever. the problem with being from yeah. a state where your number one uh, exports are, are, are tree sap and, and rocks. That's what uh, we have here in New Hampshire. Right. So, right. Um, right. I, obviously, this guy isn't going to be allowed to judge his own uh, trial. I mean, this is just a, this is a fluke, um, you know. Yeah, this is the this is the same kind of fluke that put that put me in jail. You you guys don't even know why why they put me in jail. It was because of a fluke. It was a clerical error. But yes, this is New Mexico, and like the like I said on your show, the public defender dude said to me, he sees this stuff in court from judges, et cetera, every single day. They mess stuff up um, here in our wonderful state of New Mexico government. So yeah, they indeed assigned uh, uh, Judge Sheriff Sheriff Judge uh, Heath White. 
to judge his own criminal case where he was the, the defendant. And then they discovered their error, and the attorney general uh, removed uh, the uh, defendant, Judge Sheriff, Sheriff Judge Heath White, <laughs> from presiding over his own criminal case. So they have they have remedied that problem. So amazing. David, thank yeah. you for the call. Thanks Appreciate the it. Call, it's uh, you know he always finds the best stuff. Um, he's, he's always got these good stories. And I mean, I I think of all governments as corrupt, right? But it, but it, he certainly makes the case that New Mexico's might be a little more corrupt than most. Yeah, he's uh, shared shared many a tale, and uh, it's always it's a lot of times it's just surprising. It's like, ah, come on, David, you can't be. And then you research it, and yeah, he's sure right. enough, he's right. In this case, uh, the, the attorney general felt that this may be inappropriate and ordered an investigation into why <laughs> just exactly how this uh, happened. Exemplary uh, uh, morals there in the, uh, the the attorney general. I appreciate them uh, doing it. Uh, uh, Chris, I got to say, um, I think this is uh, an important and auspicious show where we have reached our 200 station mark. I want to thank all the listeners, all the amplifiers, all all the stations out there, everybody who takes us, uh, I'd encourage people who like Free Talk Live to call their stations and ask for more, ask for us live, whatever it might be. We do appreciate people who call in live. Try to be as, I, I try as hard as I can to be as fair as I can with every caller. I'm not going to agree with every one of you by any stretch of the imagination. But remember, if you hear us recorded, you hear us on podcast, you hear us delay broadcast on radio stations across America. Probably as many of them carry us uh, delayed as they do live. You're always welcome to call in. If it's between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m., that's 1900, 2200 hours Eastern. Eastern time. I don't know what that is, Zulu. Don't ask me. <laughs> I can't. I can't like add five to 19. And then it... would you like to hang out with Penn Jillette? He's keynoting Freedom Fest this year. I, for one, am thrilled. Freedom Fest is the largest liberty-oriented gathering in the world. They take a big ten approach with libertarians, conservatives, liberals, anarchists, capitalists, and just open-minded people mingling together to hear real debates, share real solutions, and converse freely. This year's theme is the Wild West, a time of liberty and opportunity, or a time of anarchy and violence. Maybe both. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and get your tickets now. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Not convinced yet? Hey, I understand. It's a high-end event. Even with coupon code FTL50. Sure, you're likely to receive investment advice that'll make that sum seem paltry, but I have something special for you. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and you'll get the five best speeches from last year for free. Call it a test drive. Do yourself a favor and go to freedomfest.com slash FTL. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Use coupon code FTL50 for a discount.